All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV, usually on Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m., but this is a special Saturday edition yeah. Yeah. with pro wrestling superstars, future Hall of Famers, The Patriot, and Buff Bagwell. Guys, uh, this one's going to be aimed at Dell, and then Buff can admire the answer. Um, this is not an easy question. I hope I say this right. Can you tell me... In your opinion, and this is sensitive, what the difference is to you between a swastika and the Confederate flag? Well, I grew up in the South, and I think, first of all, I think people... There's a lot about the Civil War that's been misunderstood. I, I understand the slavery issue, but there were other overriding issues that led up to... For sure. There were states that tried to secede from the Union that, that weren't slave states prior to this happening. So that is not the only reason for the Civil War. But when you control the narrative, then you can control history, and then you can paint it any way you want to, and that, that's been done. Slavery was a horrible blight on this country, a horrible thing. And... But there were more issues that went into fighting the Civil War. Um, but now back to the swastika and the flag. I never, ever, ever, as a guy that has flown that flag off my house years ago, I never looked at it as it pertained to the Civil War. You know what it represented to me? It represented the region of the country that I lived in. History. I've traveled this world, and there's no place like the South. There's no place like Dixie. And in my opinion, there's no place like South Carolina in that region. So to me, it represented a way of life, a more slowed down pace, a more friendly pace, where neighbors helped each other and looked out for each other. Uh, I never looked at it. Well, boy, that was the flag that kept people enslaved. That wasn't the way I saw it. Right. Have there been some groups that have used it in a negative way? Yes. Sure. But also, too, the American flag flew over states as well that... That, that were slaves. Um, slaves were brought in in this state, in the port of this state. Uh, but you know, again, when you control history, you control the narrative. And, uh, or, you know, when you control the narrative, you can control history and, and the reading and the printing of history. But um, that's just the way I've looked at it. I've never looked at this Confederate flag as any. And again, I'll go back to this living in South Carolina. I've been there all my life. Up until Dylan Roof went into a church and shot nine innocent black people. And, and I went to high school with Dylan's dad. I know Dylan's mom. Mm. He come from a bad family. And when I say bad, it was a very dysfunctional family. But this kid was a downright racist. And he went into that Sunday school room, and those people allowed him in, invited him in. He sat with them. They prayed with him, prayed for him. And that scumbag stood up and shot nine of them. Dylan Roof doesn't represent what the South is about. Mm. South Carolina reacted great to that. There was no burning. There was no looting. The people of South Carolina came together one of the worst things ever happened in that state, ever. We're a good state. That Confederate flag flew over our state house until that happened. Nikki Haley brought it down. But all those years I lived in that state up until then, there was never one black person that I played football with, went to high school with, that ever even mentioned that flag. It, wasn't, it meant nothing to them. Mm. It didn't affect their life in a negative way. It was just part of life. It was part of the time and history, I think. You know, well, I mean, is, is well, that, why are we not taking other things down that are bad that are history? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's history. I mean, mm. so I mean, are, are we not going to teach our kids history? I got taught history when I went to school. When I went, <laughs> which no. wasn't much, no, was but dark. but still, you know, you learn history. That's part of the deal. Sure, you're supposed to know what happened and what went on, and 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 I mean, but there's that's gone now because of what's going on. So I don't. That's the part I at. You know, I'm 51 years old, which is you know a man, an old, an older man. But I'm just not very in the political thing. I just, I'm just not near as knowledgeable as Dell is, and 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 he's you know very, 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 very smart about it. And um, I, um, I'm intrigued on hearing him talk about it. But I just always, when I think about it, at my in my world is just it's it's, it's history. Why are we? erasing history period no matter if it happened or not right. Hitler killed how many people or whatever we that's not erased right. so why why is well, the a left, flag getting erased well the, the left would say that 
the Germans didn't put a statue of Hitler up in their country, why are we doing this of, uh, you know, our well, I'd foreign call, I'd generals? Call, I'd call all them fucking idiots. And by the way, why is it that. every single time a liberal wants to compare someone they don't like, they compare them to Hitler? Right. Hitler is in rarefied air on the demonic level. Right. How does Donald Trump get in the same sentence That's what I'm saying. as a mass global murderer? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm at a loss. That, that's I'm, the individual that's not educated enough to have an argument with you or a debate with you or mm -hmm. a discussion with you when they've got to go there. They'll go there or they'll call you a racist. That lets you know right there they've got no clue what they're talking about. Right. Have you ever been, been able to turn anybody in your conversations? <laughs> Good luck. When you, when you debate over politics, have you ever turned anybody? So basically, people just stay in their lane, argue, they believe what they want to believe, doesn't matter what the truth is, right? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think I've been able to persuade people to see things a certain way, maybe just certain individual things, but to, to radically change? No, nah, I haven't. All right, well, look over there. One of the fans watch shows says, let's talk some wrestling. So here's what I'm going to ask you. Jim Crockett passed away. <laughs> Thoughts on Jim Crockett? Man. My, my only... Thoughts of Jim Crockett was is right when I got hired, he was in charge, and then um, so I only met him one time. I was almost twenty or just turned twenty, and I got hired to a five hundred dollar a week go to school contract by Dusty Rhodes, and three days into that, Barry Windham blew his knee out. And they put me on the road, and I knew right there that was my time to, you know, to to, sh to show up, shout, you know, to, to show who I, what I could do and what I could be, and and we did so, and they, you know, it was hard, it was tough. I mean, I'm sitting in a locker room with guys that are 10 to 12 years older than me. For some reason, the whole clique was always 10 to 12 years older than me. Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Sting, Luger, probably you. It, the whole clique. Yeah, and, and, and so the problem is, is you can't be a pretty boy prima donna that plucks your eyebrows and shaves your arms and your back and your neck in the world of pro wrestling unless you're a badass or may, may knock somebody out. Mm. So for for at least a year, it was it's going to sting to me in first, and they were like, "Why are you right? You know, the pretty boys always get the fag thing. Why are you hanging out with that fag?" And da, 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 da. I mean, from the nasty boys down, I got just ripped apart. Then one day, I knocked a guy out of the bar cold. The nasty boys counted ten count, and I've done it so many times. I'm walking out of the bar in Jacksonville, Florida as cops are passing me <laughs> to go to see what happened. Because I know as soon as I hit him, they're going to be coming. Right. It ain't my first time I've hit somebody. So after that, it was like, you know what? <laughs> Back with us may fucking knock you out. So, you know, y'all. So every, when I became that kind of person, they didn't know the little boy in the corner over there had been to jail in more trouble than the entire locker room. But I couldn't say that, so I just suck it up, take it. I got dumped ice water on me every shower I took, and we talked about it on Stone Cold's podcast by Stone Cold every single time. And when I came out of that bathroom, there were 30 sets of eyes on me just waiting for me to go, who the hell are you? And I came out whistling, drying off, and just didn't sell it till finally... You know, I won him over, and and then then all of a sudden I was, you know, Marcus Bagel was funny and cool and great, and then all of a sudden though, then it switched to, did you hear what Buff said? So Marcus Bagel didn't change nothing he said. Buff didn't change anything, right. but when Buff became Buff, it was like, ooh, Buff said so and so. Did you hear that? Oh my God, you know. So that was, you know, that's just. You know, life, you know. Would it made a difference though if you would have came out of the shower and like tried to beat? Oh, Marcus absolutely, it made a difference. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have survived. It would, have, uh, you get eat alive by the guys, by the boss, you know, in everything. I survived 
five bosses at WCW. Mm. And then and there's only two guys, only two, that went the entire eleven year career with WCW and that was Sting and me. That was the only two. Yep. Everybody went back and I mean, I had guys that would beat me at WCW, get hired by the WWF, come back to WCW, and when I saw they came back, I knew I said, well, I'm getting beat by him again, and I get beat again, again by that guy. Right. Which shows nothing but the WWF is stronger than WCW. Right. And I'd go to Eric and go, I finally went to Eric, and he had me, we hired Sandman. And I love Sam Man. He's a great guy. Just had that. him in a week ago. Yeah, yeah, great guy. I love him. But we hired him, and they had me doing a, a job for him in Vegas in front of 60,000 people. And I said, Eric, why do you always want to make companies or all the bosses? I said, this is automatically going to show that like ECW is better than we are, obviously. They walk in, and B he beats Buff back out of the gate. So what was well, it was over, I'd be, I'd be Bam Bam Bigelow and Sandman together. Because it made sense. Oh, so you turned it around. Yes. Okay. But back to Crockett, I don't have no opinions on Crockett at all because I never only met him once. And then, God, I think it was maybe Flair or Ole. I mean, no, it was Dusty, I think. Because Dusty's who hired me. It was Dusty first that was our boss. And um, I remember wrestling a match with Chris Benoit. And, uh, I mean, I've wrestled 70-plus dead guys now. And if I have, his number's close yeah, to the I'm same right. or higher, you know. Well, how hard is that on you guys? I mean, that's like your, that's like your family. It's like just, you, it's you know? just, it's just, it's, it's how do you so. How deal with that? It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre and amazing. Let there, let there, let there be 70 NFL guys die. Mm. And let's see what happens. Right. Let there be 70, but, you know, Major League Baseball guys die. I mean, come on. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about. Dusty Rhodes that hired me that died. I'm not talking about right. Um, Owen Hart. Down. I'm talking about yeah. guys I locked up with and wrestled. Mm -hmm. Rick Rude, right. Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Bam Bam Bigelow, Kurt Henning. I mean, big name guys that I locked up with and worked that are dead. So is, gone. It, is it the steroids? Is no, the drug hell use? Is no. Is it the drug not. use no. or the mixture of taking the steroids with the drugs? Steroids ain't got nothing to do with nothing, dude. It's nothing. Steroids I mean, had nothing to do nothing with Nothing to do with any what of it. What is it that it's causes so many tragedies? Medication, yep. cocaine, it's medication. somas, it's sleeping pills, yep. it's Valiums, it's Xanax mixed yep. with alcohol, yep. uh, trying to come down from snorting eight ball of cocaine. I was going to say, yep. the exactly coke back in the day could not have... Yeah, well, well, keep in mind, your name's Buff Bagwell, so let's go that route first. And let's say that I can look at a bag of cocaine and lose 10 pounds. So, <laughs> that was not my drug of choice, right. by no means. Right. And so, you know, I, I just didn't do that. I mean, I, I would and did and all that, but it just, I couldn't play with that one, you know, so I didn't. But, um, you know, just, uh, but the steroids thing, Duke, is beat up and all that, dude. But I'm telling you, how many commercials now do you see about low T? But during wrestling, yeah. oh, God, Good testosterone. That's why Chris Benoit killed his family. Right. Bullshit. Got nothing to do with it at all, dude. The steroids ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Roid rage ain't even a thing, bro. It ain't even a thing. Really? I'm telling you, it ain't. My doctor prescribes me testosterone, and every two weeks I give yes. myself an injection. So do so I. I. Comes I to my door. The steroid part. It was and you a, don't tear your t-shirt off but wait, and run no, around but the house. I don't beat my asses. Okay. Could the low test be from the use of steroids, and now your body stop? Obviously, when you get older, your test goes down. Sure, anyway, it does. Absolutely. Right? But using the steroids but, uh, when let's you were also, But let's also go the route of my 19-year-old nephew. His testosterone was low. Okay. So right. I, can't, I can't answer that because of things like that I know. Look, maybe what you're saying is true. I, but I don't know. I'm not saying I'm anti-human. No, 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 no. I'm not dogging you're, you for You're talking one. about running backs like Peterson who blew out his knee and he was back in seven months using whatever they gave him. Mm. That's some kind of miracle drug. Well, I was back in 10 ripped and shredded, so... There you go. You call it, you know, so, and it wasn't from 
But my only L O T. My only point. Do you think it's? You, you just think it's the drug use. It's not absolutely. Just, it's just yes. the absolutely. one thousand the lifestyle and the yeah. drug use. It's the same thing. It's lifestyle and the and I mean it's prescription drugs. Period. It's a deadly period. cocktail of prescription drugs mixed in with some alcohol, mixed in with cocaine, but mostly the prescription drugs. Yes. When you take enough somas, you're going to go to sleep, and you're uh, one day you'll not wake up. You take enough Xanax mixed with Halcyon, drink some liquor, you don't want to knock yourself out and go to sleep. Uh, you, you will, and we, eventually you won't wake up. You can ask. You can ask Dell. You, we used to, to go around with your hand over the top of your bottle because guys would, would, would they call it they call it H bomb. Wow. They throw a fucking. But the only thing that saves you is if you did it, you knew what you were looking for. The beer would foam over. Right. So you literally would walk around with your. And the joke became, guys started going around with their, with their bottle. But to be honest with you, that, that, that's not really too funny, right? You could end up no. taking someone out. Like, why would you even do something? That's, well, but the that's the kind of shit. Everybody thought it was funny. Yeah, we thought funny. it was hilarious. Wow. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I never did because I didn't want to waste my now, pills. Now, both of you uh, went uh, from uh, the NWA uh, to the WWF. Was there a difference in the lifestyles from the guys or just the same guys doing the same thing? I never noticed a difference. I worked in Japan on the other side of the world, and the lifestyle was same. It didn't matter what company you worked for. No company had a stranglehold on that lifestyle. Yeah. It was the boys that decided to do that themselves. Yeah. And I worked with plenty of guys that never partook in that and never did that. So it could be done. I just didn't choose to do it that way. <laughs> well, okay. no. That's fine. And I didn't either. How do you feel about a lot of people want Vince McMahon to, to pay up? For a lot of these things. Does Vince owe these wrestlers anything? No, that was approached, as many were, about joining that lawsuit against Vince <laughs> the McMahon. Concussion thing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, Vince McMahon, again, when I got to Vince McMahon, I can only speak for Del Wilkes, but mm -hmm, when I got right. to Vince McMahon in 1997, my body was ravaged with injuries. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't long for the wrestling world. I signed a three-year deal with him. And I was already having pill problems before I got there. And Vince didn't create that. Vince got nothing to do with that. Eric no. Bischoff had nothing to do with it. No. Giant Baba had nothing to do with it. No. Jim Crockett had nothing to do with it. No. It's we as performers and wrestlers yeah. that decided to get those Percocet or get those Somas, Valiums. Go get them.